the PRO of our great party, our Progressive Congress in the Kitty State. Mr. Shevindipe, why did you decide to uh, contest the public relations office uh, of the APC and leave the government itself? Because the need of the moment, and like I said, once I'm convinced about anything, I go for it. I discovered that by and large, uh, governance will be giving way for politics. And if you know where we were coming from, 2013, 2014, that we had to... Uh, go, we lost election. Either we lost it or we were made to lose it or we seeded it. Anyhow, we did not get that transition. And somebody like me, I thought it through that come, we need a, a spokesperson, a vuvuzela, that can always say it as it is, that can come out and risk it. Because we always assume that people will know us or understand us. If you don't say, Yeah, I am, nobody will say, Where are you? So I need to come out and take up that challenge. I know that uh, there are certain things I have to part with in government, but I have to pay the price. Somebody must do it. So I took over the challenge because I know that I'm good as a public, I mean, as a communication person. I'm good as a publicist. I'm good as somebody who can, uh, who can talk. So that area of taking the challenge that uh, if all I can give to the progressives is the voice as a spokesperson to make sure that whatever we intend to do is properly communicated. I'm ready to sacrifice. How did the governor take your desire for this uh, position to change? Well, he, he knows me that if I'm vehement or if I want to do anything, I'll continue to repeat it. And you know, he's not the kind of person who is fussy or forceful about anything. And I've given him assurance, just like we are doing, I'm talking government. I always talk government, I always write about government. But my major role now is to take the responsibility of speaking for the party. I think he, he didn't see anything bad because he knows that uh, if we don't properly transit, it's also going to tell on his image and on his, uh, on his uh, um, uh, the period that he was uh, in the saddle. So we have to agree that somebody must, sac like I said, it's a sacrifice. And somebody must take up that sacrifice. You need my membership card or how do I do the accreditation? Your name sign? Just to sign my name? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm here with Sinito. Okay. Here you have his own name yes, there. Sir. Okay, where do we hear? Yes, sir. from any parties? As regards my going, Contest. maybe I didn't notice it because I wasn't. I was the only contestant. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would have contested with me. I didn't notice it. If there is any resistance, it was never projected. All the delegates have been accredited. What we are now to do is to start the election. Tell us about the Congress itself. I think it's fantastic. You see, I always tell people that uh, before and after election, are more important than the time of election. Before the election, there would have been plans, there would have been canvassing, there would have been us trading and all that, which we did well and uh, we made people see, it's like campaign people see why somebody like me should go at this point in time. And of course, there's no big money there. So people won't rush to the place. The only concern there is that maybe if A is there, it may, it may shut out B not give B uh, uh, the opportunity to express themselves or whatever. And if those things are discussed and trashed and iron out, probably iron out, I think people will consider that for you. Where there is consensus, the mood of election has to change. We are a candidate has a mild by consensus for an elected position, a vote of yes or no by ballot or shall be my voice vote. By and large, uh, our party has been a party that's uh, always, well, coming from uh, the past, that's now concerned about stability and continuity. And we factor that into how 
uh, we presented members, and if it's members within members uh, within the party, we don't always record uh, have any challenge except pockets of complaints or grievance or concerns, which will definitely be uh, uh, taken care of. I, Michael Opeyemi, delegate to the State Congress of Agri Party, a member of the party from what B in Iyekiti, in the record of the local government, uh, in view of the fact that the nominee, Barrister Paul of Otosho, is the only one aspiring to the position of chairmanship of the party, and in further view of the fact that as of the close of the nomination process, no other aspirant had signified intention to contest for the chairmanship position. And in further view of the fact that I am personally concerned that it's a fit and proper person to lead our party, based on his antecedent, based on his credibility, I hereby most respectfully move the motion for the adoption of Barrister Paul Okotosho as the chairmanship candidate of all progressive Congress in the United States. I hereby uh, so move. Thank you. I hereby second the motion that Barrister Paul Okotosho should be our chairman God bless you, sir. Do we all unanimously support this nominee for the position of the state chairman for APC AKT? Yes. Those in support say yes. And those against say no. The yes have it. Let's put our hands together. 36 positions were filled with consensus candidates and voice votes as approved by the National Congress Committee. Do you agree that APC is in crisis at the moment? APC is not in crisis. Okay. If we have to compare APC with other parties, I kept telling people that there are only two parties in the Kitty State now, APC and others. Others who don't even have any address, who don't even have any uh, executive, who don't have anybody taking care of them, and APC that is stable, that has address, well, you know our headquarters, you know our office, that has address, that has a party faithful. But then, you, when, when you, have, you are in a political setting, you have uh, different needs, you have different ambitions, different aspirations, and there will always be conflict in those aspirations, especially where this thing always come from, are those people who have had opportunity in the past, not of their making, but of the making of the system to get to a high level. They now believe that they must retain that high level at the expense of uh, those who are coming. What you have in the past is opportunity. And if that opportunity is being made available to others, you shouldn't see yourself as be all and all, as somebody who should be there permanently and others shouldn't be there. I mean, for somebody to think I don't belong to the party or I shouldn't aspire in the party or I shouldn't go get to the top in the party, I think um, there will be conflict of interest. So by and large, there is conflict of interest, but that does not mean there is crisis in the party or there is uh, any problem that cannot be uh, solved. If you look at uh, home fronts, you look at families, People disagree, especially when it comes to sharing of positions or sharing of uh, 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 the property or whatever. But that doesn't mean that that family will uh, now collapse. People will talk it through. You don't recognize factions in the party in the state? We know where factions are. I mean, if they ask you, you will tell us that uh, there is no PDP. Sorry for mentioning the name. There is faction there. We don't have faction there in our own. We may have uh, oh uh, SD followers like me now. We have I have a team that call themselves a, a public communications team. 
just because of the way I raise them and in social media, they help to do one work or the other. That doesn't mean a faction. That just means a team that goes by the name. So we go by different names. And if you want to mention Swagger, it's a name of those who are trying to support a particular person to get to, uh, to become the president. They are not saying we are not APC. But in PDP, we know, we know when we talk of factions, you, it slides through from, from top to bottom. It slides through. And you can say that if you say I'm PDP, they will say which PDP. But if you say you are APC, nobody asks which APC. APC is one. Based on the powers vested on me as the chairman of the state, state congress committee, by the APC caretaker extraordinary convention planning committee, having that all the, contest, uh, all the contestants have fulfilled all the requirements and scored the highest votes by voice voting, as you all witnessed, I declared all the 36 contestants as the winners of the position that each and every one of them contested for. State Chairman of the APC, Barrister Paul Motosho, was re-elected. Deputy Chairman Shola Eleshin was also re-elected, while the Secretary, Arogundare Shola, was among those returned unopposed. A former Senior Special Assistant to the Ekiti State Governor on Public Communications, Mr. Shegu Dikwe, was one of the newly elected officers. Mr. Dikwe replaces Chief Adajai as the Public Relations Officer of the party. In his acceptance speech, the re-elected Chairman, Paul Omotosho said with his team, the party will be given a renewed vigor. We know the enormity of the task ahead of us. And we know it takes utmost transparency, utmost unity, dedication and commitment for us to be able to take the party to the promised land. We have done it in the past. I can vividly remember that in 2019, the All Progressive Congress in the state chapter contested on elections, and we won all. This time around, we are determined, focused, prepared to do better and more than what we did then. Now tell us, what is your agenda as the public relations officer of the party in the state? My agenda is to portray the party as the best party, and which it is. My agenda is to express all our uh, plans for the people. My agenda is to be the voice, to be the spokesperson, to be the one, the vuvuzela, the one that uh, blows out like the on. If we are to do something, I'm to announce it. If uh, there is anything to be corrected, I'm the one to correct it. If there is uh, anything that we should tell the public, I'm sure I'm the one to tell the public. I have no other agenda outside of the party agenda. In the next five, four years in office, what is your vision of what to achieve? I would rather achieve all I want to achieve as spokesperson between now and next year when we transit properly. After that, I think we can start talking about any other uh, status or any other level for me. For now, my plan, my ambition is to make sure that we transit smoothly from uh, the JKF uh, second term uh, into another uh, party faithful becoming the governor and uh, continuing the progress and process. One of the features of uh inconsistency or crisis within the PDP, which some people are pointing out, is the fact that they don't appear to be preparing for the 2022 uh, election as uh, we cannot see uh, aspirants coming out as we do in the PDP. You mean uh, in APC? Yes. I think we just have a mechanism for all these things. There are people who are already showing their intentions, but we have a system. We have a, when you have a governor uh, in the Sadu, you don't try to outsmart that governor and you don't have to rock the system. Because if 
people come out openly now and start campaigning canvas and they will rock the system. So we have a mechanism that makes it impossible for you to rock the system. Even if you have the ambition, you can still temper it till we now uh, gradually transit from governance to politics. I think uh, by and large, it's not that we don't have uh, people who are showing interest, but we don't have people who do it with the same desperation and vehemence as we have in PDP. The Independent National Electoral Commission has announced the dates for every step leading to the successful election of the next governor of our state. Just as the newly elected chairman has said, our prayer, our determination, our commitment is that the next governor of this state will still come from our great party, the All Progressive Party. The work we have to do is to collectively move in that direction, working with the party leadership to ensure a process that provides a level playing field for all interested people in this exercise. Our prayer is also that this will be violence free, just as we have witnessed in this exercise that has been conducted today. We are close to January when yes. the primary election is supposed to hold. Yes. Are they, is it not getting late? Getting late for the election to come up on. For the necessary uh, campaigns and all that before the... 24 hours is very long in politics. 24 hours. Any decision can be taken. Let me give you an instance. When uh, uh, Governor Fayoshe was to come in then, while they were planning and uh, for everything, he couldn't even mention who his uh, deputy governor would be. He had to select the old man, I mean, send the old man's uh, name, and later changed it to that of uh, Professor Eleka. So, I mean, I, I can't see any time that is too long for us to mention that this is the person we want to kill behind. We have a structure, we are formidable. We have a, a, our a office, we have a, our own a APC. The, the PDP are not even ready. You have pockets of a, a, a party members saying that I want to be governor, but they don't have a unified center. They don't have a center. They don't have a place where they can say, this is our headquarters, this is our office. This is where every one of us will rally, uh, will rally together to, 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 to be formidable enough like uh, APC is. APC is one in uh, equity. Other parties are not. From your exposition at the moment, it appears that the APC will want to settle for a consensus candidate for the uh, governorship election. If it's allowed in our constitution, yes, it is an option. And um, I, I am not in a position to say this is what we will do or what we will not do. But I can assure you that we have a governorship candidate who will present a very strong personality who can continue from where JKF stops. How early would that be? As early as we do it. Okay, Ekiti, at 25, what is your own observation? I think Ekiti has come a long way. I think uh, there is more than enough to celebrate. The fact that we took off without any takeoff grant, and we are where we are. And like I said, we are in the good news, we are the news for every good reason every time. When the Vice President, uh, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, came the other time, <laughs> he was appalled and he proudly mentioned that a kitty can, ma can, can match any, even some of the pockets of uh, uh, um, countries across West Africa. And he said, the, I mean, our economy is doing well and it has a bright future. There is no question at all, and we heard so much already, that AKT has established the foundation for a modern and thriving economy. The fundamentals are there. A modern, strong, consistently improving legal and justice sector with forward-looking laws, which include a contemporary administration of civil justice the first of its kind, Sustainable Development Goals Law. 
Ekiti is strong. Ekiti is firm. Ekiti has enough to celebrate in various, on various projects. Let me give you this. I'm not one of those who will say anything if we we'll condemn the, the flyover at Fajui. For whatever, in whatever way, or for whatever reason, it has come to stay. It's one of the uh, high-catching projects that we have put there, I mean, in our 25 years. What project is there in Akure that is not in Ado? What project is there in other states that you can't talk? I just said it that people prefer our roads. And you can imagine Ekiti boasting uh, better roads than many states that have been in existence before them. Look at institutions. And recently, maybe because uh, that's my talk, um, they are considering uh, uh, adding six law schools to the existing six. And Ekiti's name is in dimension. I mean, they are considering uh, putting a Nigerian law school in Ifaki. We have, uh, in, in the area of security, we have military zones here. We have universities. We have a school of agree. We have a lot of projects that we can point at. We have a lot of things that we can say that qualify us as a very reliable and very good state. Uh, Ekiti has been governed in the last 25 years by a number of military as well as civilian. Like every other state. What will be your score? for the different, or your scores, for the different civilian uh, administrators of the state? Well, to the extent that uh, uh, governance is a continuum, I don't like apportioning blames. I would rather say, by and large, uh, we have uh, had our fair share of the good, the bad, the ugly. And uh, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, stood, we, we stand firm. And um, everybody has come and contributed his own quota. And um, everybody, to me, I think everybody has done well. To me, I think anybody that has governed Ekiti, that spirit of Ekitiness is in him. You know in Ekiti, we always don't go far. When you leave the place, you still come back home. And you can't go run anywhere. And whatever you do, is just staring you in the in the face. So, to uh, to a large extent, everybody uh, should be commended for having contributed their own fair share. I want you to speak in a dialect to our people. Whatever you want to say. Yora okete kiti kete o akwelua yoni mumba in soro ya kiti okonla ya o esi a shati ni nora. We've been speaking with the newly elected public relations officer of the All Progressive Congress in Ekiti State, Mr. Shedun Dipe. Thank you for coming, sir. It's a pleasure. People of the Fountain.